Hello, my friend. This is Pastor Anton Bronson of World Harvest Centered Ministries, where our focus is centered on the harvest of the world. And where we can't go by air, we go by prayer. We hear a lot of good messages, but is there a word from the Lord? I got good news for you, my friend. There is a word from the Lord. So stay tuned. Pay close attention as we prepare now to go into the word. Get in that. Amen. It's time for us to go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Anybody agree with that? Amen. You can also take song, the words of song, and grab it by faith. If you really can, you can really can grab those words, and you could be free today. You could walk out of here free. If you would just sometimes you just have to listen to what the words of the songs are saying. Amen. God will minister to you right through a song. Amen. And your very life could be changed. But well, I'm so glad to be here on this Sunday morning. Amen. Thank God I'm off work tomorrow. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all off work tomorrow? <laughs> Amen. God be the glory for that. Amen. But we're going to be talking about Beware of the False Prophets, uh, part number two. We went through uh, just laying down the foundation on last Sunday, but now we're going to get right on into it. Amen. Like I said, it's probably going to be four parts to this message. We're going to be coming today out of Matthew chapter number seven. Amen. Everybody can turn to Matthew chapter number seven. Glory to God. Got my little outfit on here for. A bishop, he liked to watch and he liked to see me over there in Africa. We're gonna be going there in December, you know, so it's encouraged him. He loved to see me with these little uh things. They actually made this for me, so this comes straight from Africa, amen. This is from Africa, amen. So we just want to encourage our brothers in the Lord over there in Monrovia, Liberia. We're gonna be having a conference call with them on today about some things in the Lord. But everybody have Matthew's chapter number seven, and we have some wonderful times here on Friday. Now, how many agree with that? We had some good time on Friday. Amen. It's a real good time. We're in the book of Acts, the sixth chapter right now. Amen. So if you go back on your own time and go over Acts chapter number six, because you know I'm going to call you up. going to have our little brief synopsis. Amen. Let's see what y'all got out of the word on Friday night. So everybody be ready. I had everybody come up on Friday. <laughs> we did a little video recording, had them come up. and Because uh, I want to show y'all this. You know, the spies not small beginnings. Amen. When we begin to grow, we're going to show these little films. You know, we are small. Amen. Just let you know where God is taking them from faith, from faith, from faith to faith and to glory to glory. Amen. How many know it's all about growing? Amen. We're not going to stay in one place, but Matthew chapter number seven. And we're going to be talking about beware of the false prophets. And when you preach a message like this, some people get mad, but ain't nobody going to be mad but the devil and his false prophets. Amen. So if you're mad, you might need to check yourself. If it's, but there's some false prophets that's out there. And me as a man of God and men of God, women of God, we have a responsibility to tell people the truth. Amen. To be aware because we are living in the last days right now. That's why the devil has so focused off of all, you know, all these natural things. That's another. I played that song, you know, because it, it really don't have nothing about God. Bring me out. You know, God, we need you. Nothing like this. That man, he was just going at the more of God, you know, the God, the creator of the worlds, the universe, amen, the God that could do anything, amen, I just want to broaden your, your, your imagination and broaden your thoughts, amen, and stop just viewing God how we've been viewing God for all these years, and we wonder why we haven't attained certain levels in God, you know, when it comes to walking according to the scriptures or getting the results of the Bible, it's because even how the children of Israel, how they limited the Holy One of Israel, they limited God to certain things, you tie, you could tie the hands of God, amen, you want to keep God in a little pocket, it, you know, in a little box, you know, that's up to you. But I believe that God is the God of the Bible. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's still the same yesterday and today and forever. When he talks about Jesus Christ in Hebrews chapter number 13, verse number 8, which is one of my favorite verses to quote, especially when I'm overseas. I always like to preach off that subject that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. And watch God work uh, miraculous miracles in the lives of the people. We're living in a day and time now where our false prophets, false teachers that are out here. Amen. You don't have to look very far to see that. You can turn your TV on. You can turn on YouTube. And if you have any spirituality at all, you can see that the church has gone left. Amen. But we need to get back right before it's forever too late. Amen. And there's a few people out there like myself, and I'm not ignorant. It's a lot of people. That I'm not just the only one, but we don't mind preaching the truth. Amen. Because we're not out the popularity. We're not out the fame. It's better for me to please God rather than to please man, because he's the one that we all going to have to stand before on that day of judgment. Amen. We got to get back to this type teachings. Amen. Back to these type messages, because these are the last of the last. Day. How many believe that? 
I mean, we live in a day and time people are thinking far, their mind ain't, ain't on nothing about the last of the last days of Jesus Christ coming back or the rapture of the church. You know, there's so many prosperity messages being preached. You know, we got people believing for more cars, believing for careers and stuff like that. Like, we spoke, like why are we getting comfortable in this temporary place right here Amen. when this world is going to be destroyed? The world we live in now is temp Why? I, I just want to ask the question, why are we trying to get so comfortable here? We try, I mean, I know you have to, you know, make pre pre preparations for your family, you know, with the case and stuff like that. That's not what I'm talking about. But you got people that are literally just getting comfortable on the earth as if they are not going to die one day or, or if this Jesus Christ is not going to return. But what I'm trying to do is bring this stuff back to your remembrance because you're not careful. You could be in the church and still miss out on your eternity in heaven with Jesus Christ. Amen. How many believe that? Amen. Amen. It's a thin line. Amen. That's why you got to constantly examine yourself with the word of God. That's why it's so important to get in church every time that you can get into church. Get up under the word of God. Even when you're not in church, it's, we got to get back into prayer time. We got to get back in Bible study time. We got to get back into private worship time. I'm breaking down this message right here because there are false prophets out there. But if you have not built yourself up in the spirit, man, like you're supposed to be into the maturity of God, into the knowledge of God, you had a scripture said that my people perish for lack of knowledge. You get your knowledge through the word of God and what these false prophets going out there, you won't be able to discern what's true or what's not true. If you have not been into the word of God, if you're not a faithful church member, you constantly up here, how faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Amen. It's important for you to be in church. It's important for you to be in Bible says when that word of God is being broke down. But now we're getting so far from that. We have uh, internet you know, church is live. So I understand why we do those things, but people are taking it now. They don't even go to church. They just say, hey, I just watched it at home. Hey, Amen. We could watch the live stream and I just send my type on the little app and stuff like that. So we got, but don't get caught up in those things. All those things are nice. You see, we right here. We on YouTube broadcast right now because he that win of souls is wise. But I understand that it's only a certain amount of people you would reach even on uh, television or on a YouTube or on the internet. You still have to go out. You have to go out one-on-one -on -one witnessing. You got to still preach revivals. You got to still have a tent revival. You still got to have crusades, you know, because a lot of times when you're on television, if you be honest with yourself, a lot of times only people that's watching is the Christian people. You know, we're watching, which is good because it sharpens us and encourages us. But we're really the only ones that's watching. So we can't we got to get back to the Bible way of doing things. We got to get back into the word of God. And Matthew's chapter number seven, tell us right here, say beware. Verse number 15, Matthew chapter number seven, verse number, it say beware of the false prophets. Amen. Beware which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Be that word beware means to restrain or guard oneself from, to regard with caution, to restrain oneself from anything that may be dangerous, injurious, or improper, to avoid, to take care. Amen. That's what the word of God said. Jesus said, this is the word that Jesus is saying. He said, beware of these false prophets out here. Amen. Because they come in, they look, they dressed up, they look right. Amen. Amen. But Jesus say, look here, he's going to teach us something here. He say, he, he say, ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? Every so, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. How many know we, a lot of times we talk about fruit, we also call it uh, produce. Amen? Am I right? Amen. So you also know false prophets by the word. Amen. What they're producing, the doctrine that they produce out of their messages. Amen. The word of God does not contradict itself. Even, I don't care how good it sounds. Sometimes you know in your spirit that some things are not right. Amen. But the way they're packaged up on today. Amen. You got some preachers can preach you out your shoes and socks and you're not careful. You, you're not listening to what they're saying. It's easy to be trapped up and come up under some false doctrine. 
doctrine, amen, because of the way the package is being wrapped, amen, so to speak. So you got to be careful. You got to be watchful. This is a damn time. I don't hear this word or not a lot like I used to, but you got to have discernment. We got to get back to this. You got to sharpen your discernment. How do you sharpen your discernment? You got to get back to what? You got to get back to fasting, denying yourself, killing the flesh. How many know that the Bible declares there's nothing new up under the sun? Amen. Am I right? Amen. So we're going to have to turn. I thank God we're in the book of Acts during the week on Friday night because you're going to have to come back. That was a representation of the first of the early church. A lot of theologians like to call it. Amen. But it's going to have to come all the way back around how they operate in the book of Acts. How many believe that? It's going to have to be that way. You're going to have to get back to fast. You're going to have to get back to prayer. You're going to have to get back to having revivals. You're going to have to get back to reaching out to the lost. You're going to get back to denying yourself. That's why I love the Apostle Paul, man. His whole ministry was built up how he died daily. Amen. He continued to crucify his flesh. Amen. Because he understand just like he is a man of God. He's preaching the word of God. He could be deceived himself. Even myself. I can't just be someone just preaching the word. I have to live this word. I was telling the brother on this week, we were talking. I say, man, I had to, I got to practice some long suffering today because I haven't been Amen. teaching about long suffering. But it's easy to preach, but it's another thing to live it. Amen. But I understand that I have to not only preach the word, but I have to live the word. It's another thing coming to church and hearing the word and, and living the word. You got to live it. You just can't come and hear it. You got to live it. And that's Amen. what we've been caught up in because you've been saved for so long. You just got you coming to hear it, but you're not applying it to your life. And that's how you could come up and be deceived by the false prophets because you understand they know the word. And I'm going to show you something in a few minutes that's going to blow your mind. It blew my mind. How many know uh, God showed me even from even each level that you go in your life, you know, you'll get new revelations in the scriptures. Some scriptures I've been reading for years. I mean, and God's been showing me some new things that I've been reading. I've read the scriptures and never popped out to me how, how they've been doing it so far. Amen. So let's turn to uh, 2 Corinthians. We're giving you some word today because this is going to be like a four part message so I can take my time. And we can get into the first, second Corinthians, chapter number 11. I'm going to get me a little water here while y'all turn it. Amen. Second Corinthians, chapter number 11. I will read verse 3. We'll go back. That's why it's good. Like I said, if you can. And you could be here during the week. Please come because uh, I'm just going to read part of it. I won't read the whole chapter because we have to refer back to chapter 10, then come to 11 to really understand what he's saying. But verse number three says, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtilty, subtilty, so your mind should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. And we're going to skip down to verse number 13, but you will find that this was uh, Apostle Paul was he was fearful uh, of the people being deceived by false teachers and false prophets. Like I said, during the week, we'll go back to 10 and we'll come back and we'll read all the 10 and we'll find out what he was saying because I got to skip now. I don't have time to really explain. But he was talking, he was, he was fearing, he was fearing at this particular time the people being deceived by false teachers. And he was also in the Tim chapter defending themselves by people, by some of the, I guess, preachers or other people were saying that he was walking according to the flesh, him and his gang, you know, you know, they're walking according to their flesh. So he was being to defend his ministry. And then he began to talk, getting to the point about talking how, man, he was fearful. You know, for them to be uh, all these false teachers going out, you know, that they by the simplicity of the gospel, they would be deceived even themselves. Amen. But verse number 13 say for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Y'all hear that right there? Wow, okay, so you could be a false apostle, you could be a false prophet, you could be false teachers, amen. How many know even preaching the word right now is, a, is prophesying, amen, you're prophesying, amen. So it's different uh, aspects of the word prophet and prophesy, amen. Amen. Sometimes the, the prophet or you're in the office of the prophet is one that speaks on the behalf of God. You know, one that also used to call them a seer in the Old Testament. They'll see vision. They see the future. They can tell you something that's going to happen in the future. Amen. But right now we're talking about the false prophets, the false apostles, and false teachers. He said, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. So they're transforming themselves into apostles of Christ and no marvel. He said, don't marvel like this. Don't be surprised. He said, for Satan himself 
is transformed into an angel of light. How many know we don't read the scripture over and over? I don't read it all the time. But look what I'm finna show you here. I don't read this, but I never seen it. It never popped out. He said, therefore, verse number 15, it is no great thing if his ministers, whose ministers? Hmm? Satan got ministers? He said, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their words. Oh, my God. Satan got ministers out here ministering the gospel. I, I see, I, that's why I, I'm a preacher. I got to go to the Word because if I just preach something like this and then came back at the Word, it's like, man, what you talking about? I just read to you that Satan has ministers. Amen. He got ministers in the pulpit right now this morning. Like I, I told the people, it's no surprise. The devil come to church too. The devil send people to church too. They come faithfully. Amen. Some people that's been sent by the devil that's been assigned to your churches. Amen. <laughs> Amen. For real. They ain't going nowhere. They're going to the be more faithful than your, your, you know, the, the, members, the members that are supposed to be Christians or followers of Jesus Christ. They're going to be more faithful. Because, you know, one thing about the devil, his kingdom's not divided and they, they consistent in what they do. Amen. They consist in fighting us, causing us to fight against one another as well. But therefore, it is no great thing. He said, if Satan can transform himself into an angel of light, how many know we've been taught uh, that Satan mimics everything that God does? He's not a creator. God is the creator. Satan cannot create, but he does imitate everything that God does. Amen. And this is a proof right here. He has his own ministers. And it blew my mind. Y'all better take heed to this word that's coming forth today. Amen. Because what are we talking about? Beware of the false prophets. And I told you, ain't nobody going to be mad at this message but the devil and his prophets. So if you belong to the devil, you want to say in ministers, you're the one that's mad right now. Amen. 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 But the children of God, they're thanking God. Oh, man, you can open up a brand new revelation. I needed to hear that. But so we ain't worried about it. And that's going to be the result every time. Ain't nobody going to be mad but the devil and the person that's not living right or a person that's on the devil's side. So we don't have time to worry about who received us or who don't receive us. Amen. We have to be obedient to what God is saying. So let's turn here. I told them to give you some word today. Galatians. Galatians chapter number one. Amen. I'm going to show you something else. It's all lining up. Beware of the false prophets. I'm just I'm still setting the stage because really when we go get into it, we go to Jeremiah chapter number 23 and we're going to see the false prophets in action and how they deceive and how people are willing to be deceived. And that's the thing. People are willing to be deceived. You got people that know the truth, but they're willing to be deceived. And I'm going to prove that and back that up to you in Jeremiah chapter number 23. And prayerfully, we'll get to that next week. If not, we'll get to it the following week. But how many know this is a serious word that we're, we're ministering to you right now? Yeah. This is an operation right now. I've been in operation. I just told you nothing new up under the sun. But hey, man, but this thing is coming back around and it's coming back around real strong. But Galatians chapter number one. Everybody have it? Amen. Amen. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Galatia. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. Amen. That's why Jesus saved us. Amen. To deliver us. How many know that? Amen. Amen. A lot of people like to be smart. What you save? You saved from different back religions I've been witnessing for years. <laughs> what you saved from? Amen. I'm saved from the wrath as it's come. Amen. So you got to know what you're talking about when you're out there even sharing your faith. But who gave himself, verse number four, for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So they're being deceived here, right? Here. You're addressing some deception that's been taking place right here. He said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. It ain't another gospel, what, what, what Paul is saying. It's not another gospel, but there be some 
that trouble you, got you questioning your own faith. You got to be careful. <laughs> Amen. And so I done ran into people like that that's that been saved for a long time. It didn't come to a point in time they like, they start questioning their own faith. It was a um, woman in our ministry. We came out of the Harvest Dome, Pastor R.J. Washington. There was a lady been up under the same teaching I'm on. She began to tell me that she didn't agree with what he was teaching. He, I was like, what? I'm like, we get the same teaching. I mean, like, it was like, it was crazy. But this is proof. It's here right now in this day. The same thing that happened back then, it happened right now. That's why the Bible is a relevant book. Amen. It's a living book. It speaks to us right now. Amen. And I've, I've encountered this. I was, I can understand why he said I marvel. Amen. I marveled as well. I'm like, okay, well, you just go ahead. You know, do what you're going to do. But I'm staying right here and get this good teaching. Amen. Which is not, verse number said, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel, here we go, we finna back up what we just read in uh, Corinthians, okay? And we, he said, but we or an angel from heaven, let me read it right, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. So you got to be careful. He said, if, if them, the apostles preaching in the gospel, or an angel. How many of the devil got his angels here, okay? We understand that. So you got to even be careful of what? These dreams you having. Amen. Some people have dreams. They think of God. And sometimes it's not of God. Because you, you see right here, an angel can come to you a dream. But is it an angel of God or an angel of the devil? How do I discern this, Pastor? How do I, how do I know? Know your word. You got to know this word. If you got a gift or a calling upon your life, you really got to know this word. If God deal with you in dreams, if God deal with you, with pro if you're a prophet or whatever, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever gift you have, you have to be a student of the word of God because the devil's going to come and try to pervert that gift. He's going to try to distort. He's going to try to confuse you and get you in error. You got to understand the enemy is constantly against us. Amen. Amen. But he said, but though... We or an angel. That means it's possible an angel could come to you. Amen. But it's not the angel of God. It's the angel of Satan. We just seen that Satan himself can transform himself into an angel of light. Amen. He could come and tell you a good message. Amen. But you got to have a keen enough to discern it to know, hey, man, that's not God. Did you not know when Jesus in Matthew chapter number four, when him and the devil, was, you know, the devil was tempting Jesus. What did he tempt him with? The word. Amen. But Jesus had to come back with him. I understand what you're saying. But Jesus had, he don't know how to rightly divide the word. That's why you have to study yourself or prove unto who? God. Amen. A word that need him not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And Satan knows how to twist Amen. up the scriptures. He knows this. He's a perfectionist at this. He said, you say, you cast yourself down. He said, didn't they say that angel to bear you up? Yeah, that's if he was in danger, that not to commit suicide. That ain't, you know, that's not what that scripture meant. But that was the scripture. And how many know that's how you got so many different uh, uh, religions and stuff like this because they twisting the scriptures up. Satan has used this little gift because they're not, first of all, they're not submitting to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So they automatically open to deception when you try to open up this holy book. Amen. This book can be detrimental to you if you try to read this book in your flesh. That's why you must be filled with the spirit of God, with the Holy Ghost, before you really can get a true understanding of what this King James Version of the Bible is saying. How many know this is our father's handwriting? I mean, how many know you got to be living his lifestyle? You got to be submitted unto his spirit. You got to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When he, the spirit of truth, he, not it. I mean, he, the spirit of truth, will come. He'll lead you. He'll guide you to all truth. He'll bring you back the remembrance of the word that God has already spoken unto us. That's why it's so important, too, to stand your word. Because sometimes when these deceptive uh, things come to you, the Holy Ghost will automatically let a light bulb come on. The word will come. No, that ain't it. The word say this. It, and I was even in different dictionaries you read uh, a pastor being a study of, you know we go in books we define words some dictionaries to say you know that there's no more apostles nobody else can be an apostle it stopped with the apostles back then but if I didn't know my Bible you know and I just took everything I read you know for as truth because it was talking about the Bible I would believe that 
That's why I was telling even the brother here, you know, man, when you coming up in ministry, man, you know, when you go to your reference Bible and stuff like that, always come back to the King James Version of the Bible. You know, always before you read your Bible, pray. Make sure you got understanding of the Word of God. You got to pray. You got to seek God. I pray, God, what do you want me to give the people? You know, what, what are you saying, God? Because I'm so fearful. I don't want to say nothing that God is not saying. Amen. Now that I've accepted this position right here, you better know I'm not playing with it. Amen. I don't want to be because I got a relationship. See, if you got a pastor that's not saved himself, don't have a real true relationship with God, you got to worry. But thank God to God be the glory. And I say this with the help of the Lord, I'll be leading you the right way because I got a relationship with God. I want to get to heaven. You understand? God told me at first when he called me to pass, he said, Never. he said, first, the word is coming to you. You know what? The word comes to me first. God give me a message. The message first is to me. Amen. And then I give the message to you. So what? I'm getting the word. Some pastors will think they're pastoring. Oh, I got to give the word too. Man, the word come to us first. We're not exempt from that. Who do we think we are? Amen. The word is just coming to us to give to you that we are not to apply this word to our lives ourselves. And that's how you get a lot of false problems because they're being deceived. They think they're above the people. Amen. You're not above the people. We're right here with you. Yes, I lead you as Christ leads me, but I'm not above you. Amen. I'm just the one that's out in front of you in order to stay in front of you I got to stay up under him amen, amen. so we people are being deceived because they are getting away from the relationship of God you know their relationship because they've been used on on these different levels you know God has blessed them tremendously uh, with great ministries you know they got money they got cars they're in demand people are in respect you know they're getting to be around people they wouldn't normally be able to be around and that stuff you know the cares of this world have choked amen that anointing choked the, that oomph that they had you know that relationship you know that desire because now they've obtained you know the earthly levels amen but what about, that's why I, I love, I was like, I wish y'all could have heard the song, those of you who are watching, but that's why, you know, they might say, why are you playing that song? You know, that's not really what we worship to, you know, what, what type of our type of people worship to, but man, I just want to take your mind to a whole nother level with God. I want you to get to a place where you can receive some answers from God, because you can, those type songs let you see God for who he really is, amen. Those real songs that we really come up on, you know, it just keep God in the box, because it teach you to focus on a uh, God that can get me out of trouble. Yes, he can. He's a very present help in the time of trouble, but it's more to God than that. Amen. How many know that the disciples found out it was more to God than that? That's why Peter can walk in the book of Acts. The people just in hope that his shadow would touch them. Amen. Amen. Because he found out it was more to God than just meeting my needs. It's more to God than just seeking him after things. Jesus said, you seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, all these things that we seek out and it's going to follow you. You ain't got to focus on the natural things. Things, amen. amen. I never, uh, our double channel, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. We don't have no trouble. Amen. Once we begin to worry, that comes up under sin. We're not supposed to worry. I know it's almost feel like it's impossible, but we, but we got to stop worrying, saints. The word has already assured us. I mean, that's why we all, we got we to gotta come up. We all got to come That's why I say the word come to me. I'm not perfect. I'm not going to sit here and say I don't worry from time to time, but I, I have to get brought back. I mean, the Holy Ghost will bring me back. You know, I get myself back in line. We got to trust in the Lord. Amen. Trust in the Lord. Now, if you trust in him, you know it's going to be okay. Amen. Amen. You got to trust him. How many to trust the Lord? Amen. Let me read verse number eight one more time. He said, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, than which we have preached unto you, let him be what? A curse. Man, that's, see, I don't want to be cursed. Amen. But, it, man, there's some cursed people out here. The man of God said, let him be a curse. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then ye have received, let him be a curse. For, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of God. And that's what a lot of preachers are doing right now. They're preaching to please the people. When you get, that's why it's a scary thing. You, but like we were taught, amen, if Jesus is, if, if you preaching Jesus, wherever Jesus is, going to be a crowd. So we going to grow because I'm preaching Jesus. But that's a scary thing once you start growing. 
Because, man, these people, you got a lot of pre preaching to please men. Once you start getting to a level, you have to depend on your bills being paid. <laughs> you are in style, your light bills now in your church, thousands upon thousands of dollars and stuff like that. You know, man, and you got these group of people coming, man, you, they be trying to keep the people pleased. You know, and I'm telling you something that's in the Bible. I can go to some scriptures. Come on Friday night and we'll show you how the people have fell up, fell up under that trap of the enemy just please being men pleasers. Why, why would Jesus have to say warn to you and all men speak well of you if what I'm saying is not true? Amen. Amen. I know Amen. what I'm saying is true. Amen. But you got to be careful for that. You got to preach the truth no matter what the response. That's why we was on last week. You got to be instant in season, out of season, when they want to hear it, when they don't want to hear it, when they coming, when they're not coming. I got to be consistent as the man of God because Amen. I want to please God. It's better for me to please God than to please men. Amen. Or I should not be the servant of Christ. If I'm not the servant of Christ, that seems like I've lost my relationship with him. Amen. Amen. So what? I'm on my way to hell now because I allow people trying to please people, trying to please men. When I first started this ministry, first thing God brought back to my remembrance when I was watching Catherine Kuhlman and she began to minister how people are fickle. Amen. And God brought that. Okay, I'm telling you now, people are fickle because, you know, one day going to be with you, one day they ain't going to be one day they like it. One day they, they, you know, people, they, they, they just got these little personalities, you know, they just change, you know what I'm saying? But you got to be consistent. Amen. Amen. Thank God for a wife. Amen. 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 Thank God for a wife. Amen. To God be the glory. With the help of the Lord, we'll stay like we are. If nobody got my back, she got my back. Nobody got her back, I got her back. Amen. We'll preach by ourselves. We just go be, go preach all over the world. That's what she wanted to do anyway. But God, <laughs> <laughs> but God, but God has chosen us to do this. Amen. But we'll, we'll work something out, but we ain't going to stop. Amen. I guarantee you that. Second Peter chapter 2. Amen. I told him to get a little word. <laughs> Amen. Y'all can forget that. We have been running with Jesus, and we ain't got tired yet. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and what when I, when I was a song back in the day? Amen. Running for Jesus, and we ain't got tired yet. I mean, this is a good life. How many know this is a good life? Amen. Amen. I mean, we, man, people, you, <laughs> that's why we don't have a lot of people want to come to Christ these days, man. We, you know, we always got our face to up. We always mad. and <laughs> You know, come on, put a smile on your face. Amen. Put a smile, smile, be happy for Jesus. You think Jesus would walk around his face to all up? <laughs> Jesus was happy. Come on, show them personality. That's why God gave you the Amen. personality that he gave you. Amen. For use that personality. Use your little character, God-given character, God-given abilities and talents so you can draw men unto Christ. Amen. Second Peter, chapter number two. But we still talk about the false prophets. False teachers. We're talking about beware of them. And I can't w wait until I can get into what well, we're seeing, how the people are willing to be deceived by these prophets. Amen. We talked about last week how people had itching ears. They heat unto themselves. Amen. They, they got the preachers that were going to tell them what they want to hear. Amen. They've started going after, they left the gospel of Jesus Christ, started going after fables and stuff like that. Amen. This is the day and time that we're living in right now. People want to hear, I mean, I can go into a lot, but I'm not going to go into a lot. You already know. You can see where the church is. The church is not strong as it used to be. The respect of church is not there. Uh, a lot of people are deceived to the point where they think that we got to look like the world to draw the world. The world, to be honest with you, if you talk to them like I do, they want to see something different. I mean, why, how can you draw me if, if everything, you know, I got, you got. Everything I'm doing, you doing. You just putting the name of Jesus on it. That, I mean, come on now. People want to, it's got to be a different, it's got to be a separation from the church and the world. We're not supposed to be looking like the world. I'm not talking about, you know, nothing just crazy. You know, I think, I know we got to advance the technology, but man, we looking like the world. We dressing like the world. We talking like the world. We bringing the clubs in the churches, right? I mean, you club, like the world dances in the church. I mean, world music in the church. I mean, we're justifying uh, actors and stuff. This is Pastor Anton Bronson, a world Harvest Centered Ministry. We appreciate you so much for tuning in to our broadcast. Oh, you want to keep tuning in. We're going to be getting to the nitty and the gritty. Amen. We're going to be teaching about how to be delivered, how to be set free, how to receive your healing from the Lord. But right now, I want you to continue to tune into the Word.
stuff like that. They're claiming Jesus Christ. We're justifying their salvation when they live in two different lifestyles. But because, I mean, we got to be different. You got to be willing to be talked about. You got to be willing to take persecution for Jesus Christ. You got to be willing for the people not to like you if you're going to walk this life the way that Jesus set the example for us to walk it. Amen. Jesus, man, people want to kill Jesus. They, they wanted to, they tried to throw him off of cliffs. They tried to drive him out. It was some instance where Jesus had to disappear. He had to go into a little supernatural power. He would just, he would just got lost in the midst of the crowd. Cause they were, but he knew he couldn't die before his time. That's why it's so important for you to understand your purpose and your time. Jesus could not die before it was his time. Apostle Paul couldn't die before it was his time. You'll find he had many instances with death. You'll find, if you read and study the apostles, many instances they had, they were stoned. They was about to be stoned. They were about to be killed. They were put in jail, but they had to be set free because it wasn't their time. That's why it's so important for you to find out what your purpose is. Amen. When you find your purpose, you begin to operate in your time with God. Once you repent, God gave you a space to repent. And after you repent, you get a space to operate in your purpose and your time of God. It's so important. We're going to be getting into that. Amen. I can't claim that. I was listening to our apostle RJ. He was saying that on a CD that I was listening to, man. I was like, man, I was right there in the midst of that sermon, but it went over my head. I guess it wasn't my time to hear it. Amen. But man, it's time right now. God has given you a space right now. You got a time, a space of time to fulfill your destiny. It's a space of time for you to fulfill your purpose. Amen. And when you in that time, when you in that space, you're protected. There's Amen. nothing can happen to you. That's when you get into the place where the weapon can form, but it can't prosper. Amen. Amen. That's when that scripture begin to work in your life, when you get in your purpose and you start operating in timing of God. Amen. That's why if God sent me over the world, you know, to go around the world, he'll protect me in all of the world because Amen. this is my time. This is what he's called me to. I ain't got to worry about that. You know, God is protecting me. I can go without fear because I understand I'm operating in the time and in the purpose of God. Amen. How many of know purpose will keep you alive? Amen. Purpose will keep you alive. And you can die before your time. We'll be learning about that as well. Amen. Amen. You could prophesy your own death. Some people speak themselves in the grave. Some people speak themselves in hospitals. Some people speak themselves with diseases and sicknesses Amen. on them. They speak it upon themselves because they don't understand how much power we possess once you receive Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. The Bible said death and life is in the power of our tongue. They that love us shall eat the fruit thereof. I mean, you're going to have whatever you say. Amen. Your words are powerful. Amen. We can't be using our words loosely. Like, amen. amen. Especially right now, we're coming to the knowledge of you. Watch what you say. I don't care what it look like. Amen. You got to be like God who called it those things that be not as though they were. Amen. amen. You got to start sp speaking the opposite of what you feel. Amen. Speak what God says about the situation. Stop looking at the situation. Begin to focus back on the word of God. It all comes back to the word of God. I'm almost through. I read a couple of verses of my time and almost gone. Amen. But we're going to start here again on next Sunday in 2 Peter. And like I say, prayerfully, we can get to Jeremiah chapter number 23. We're going to be going on some real good things while we're talking about here. Beware of the false prophets. I just read a couple of verses, maybe verse number one, and then we'll go in prayer and we'll close out. Amen. Amen. But 2 Peter chapter number two, verse number one. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring a damnable hearsays, even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Amen. It's going to be false prophets. It's going to be false teachers. Amen. Oh, man, he's going to be talking about how they're just beguiling the people, man. They just, and how some prophets, you know, prophets, true prophets, how they sold out for money, you know what I'm saying, for, for sold out their righteousness for money. We're going to learn about all of that because you could put yourself even in the place of the prophet. You could sell out for money. Amen. You could sell out. You could sell out and start speaking in your relationship because you getting a, you want a certain career. Now you can't go to church like you supposed to go to church now because you are chasing after money. Amen. Now you can't preach the gospel. Some people, like, they know they're called to preach the gospel because they're chasing after things. They're trying to keep a hold of things. Sometimes that's why we are taught that you got to wear stuff like a loose garment. I've, is, I've lived wearing stuff like a loose garment. My wife would tell you, I don't let some stuff go. I don't let some good jobs go. But hey, I've been all around, I'm going around the world. I'm preaching the gospel. I've done things.
things that I couldn't be able to do on that job. I'd be able to take my wife out of the country. You know, <laughs> that wasn't even on my mind. You know, she done been out the country. She done been, and she's still going to be going out the country. We've been able to do things, and we've been taken care of. Uh, God has given us favor, but I had to wear, I had to be willing to let some stuff go. Amen. That a normal person would say, man, you crazy. How are you going to give up that? Are you going to do that? Because I know the call and the purpose of God upon my life. And those things are temporary anyway. Amen. Amen. I could have lost it in the midst of whatever. You know, Florida is a no-fault state. They could fly you without any reason, without any know. You just go on your job and say, hey, man, we're not going to need you anymore. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. So we don't trust in those things. We don't trust in, 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 the, in the natural things. Amen. We trust in the will of God. And when you trust in the will of God, you'll, begin, you'll be willing to let whatever you've got to let go for you can continue your relationship or further your relationship with God. Amen. Sometimes you got to let some stuff go. Sometimes you got to let some people go. You, we're going to have to talk about that. Sometimes you have to break up some relationship. Amen. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're just going for a, to another level. And when you go to another level or to a height in God, everybody cannot go with you. Amen. Amen. Everybody's not going to understand it, but it's not for you to who explain it. It's for you to obey God. That's why we got to stay in the word. God will teach you all these things that we're learning about right here. But we're talking about these false prophets. We're going to start back uh, 2 Peter chapter number 2 on next week. Right now, we're going to begin to pray. Amen. We want to have a good time of fellowship after service. Amen. But I want everybody to begin to stand right now. How many are blessed by the word of God Amen. on this morning? Amen. Amen. A real word from God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. For your word on this morning, God, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor in Jesus' name. God, you said beware of the false prophets, Father. We thank you for the information you've given us, Father. We pray that we won't be hearers of the word only, but doers, Father God. In the name of Jesus, God, let this word that's falling on good ground of the heart. I believe it fell on good ground of their heart. Oh, God, I plead the blood of Jesus over it. And I pray, Holy Ghost, that you would bring every bit of this word back to our remembrance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for whoever's watching us right now, if they're not saved or a backslide, they need to be reclaimed. Father, I pray that you would touch them right now. God, I pray you'll do what all the power can do in their life, oh God, in Jesus' name. And God, will forever give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Amen. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord. Hello, my friends. This is Pastor Anton Bronson of World Harvest Centered Ministry. Perhaps you are blessed by the broadcast that you just viewed. If so, we want to hear from you. We want you to dial this number that's at the bottom of your screen right now because somebody's going to be waiting on just your call. The number is Erico 904-713-3609. Again, it's Erico 904-713-3609. Until next time, we'll be waiting to hear from you.